Okay, so we're going to continue in the 13th book of Israel, part 1. Goal, find goal. And we're going to continue. We're going to start in the 21st, the 21st chapter. This sermon was given on the, on the um, Feast of Pentecost, uh, 2013. The pastor goes on to say, he said, he said, praise Yahweh. Look at this. Oh, this is beautiful. He said, okay, it's going, it's go, okay, let's go one more, let's go one more time. He said, what a wonderful day, wonderful day. You can see what kind of mess the world is getting in. He said, may the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. Down to verse, uh, over in verse uh, 7, Pastor goes on to say, I think uh, if you turn uh, over to 2 Corinthians, uh, that's where we left uh, off last week, uh, and I was uh, in hope uh, of getting through what I am going to bring today and bring the last part uh, on Pentecost. But then uh, I think uh, it will probably, probably be this Sabbath before I will get to bring the rest of it. But be turning over to 2 Corinthians 6. This is where we left off in the sermons, showing that Yahweh is separating his people from the world. All right, showing that Yahweh is separating his people from the world. And when we look at this separation started from since the house of Yahweh established. Yahweh raised a pastor to start that separating his people, you know, from the world. And this, this you know, is shown to us in, in um, Genesis chapter 26, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, where it said, Yahweh is making man in his image. That, that is, is, is the finishing product of why Yahweh is separating us. He's separating us to, to, to make us in his image and his likeness. And only one person, only one individual has fulfilled this prophecy so far. And that individual is Yahshua Messiah. He's the only one that have accomplished, you know, this prophecy in being in Yahweh's image and his likeness. Because the likeness that, uh, the likeness is uh, the way Yahweh thinks, Right? That is what Yahweh's trained us uh, to do right now at this time. Right? To think like Yahweh. Right? That is what he's trained us to do right now. Uh, and the image are uh, what the image uh, is what Yahweh you know is forming us into. Now, now when, we, when we understand the image of Yahweh Right? Yes, Yahweh have two hands, he have two legs, he have a brain, you know, he sleeps, he eats food, and all that. All that, is underst all that is understood. But when we look at it, yes, we have all these same, same things too, but the difference is, you no. Know, Yahweh's body is a sinless body. Right? Yahweh don't have sin, no, no form of sin in his body. Right? And we still do have sin in our body. So, you know, it's a process. It's a process we have to be, you know, we're going through at this time. Because the image, the image basically is, is a physical likeness. Right? It's a physical likeness. That is what Yahweh is making us into right now. Or a or representation of a person. Right? Or a representation of a person. Okay, so we, we are already have, you know, two hands, two feet. You know, we walk, we, we, we eat and everything. But the full representation of Yahweh, Yahweh is still separating us from the world to carry us through that process. Right? That is the process that we are going through or the whole house of Yahweh is going through at this time. You know, that process where Yahweh is making us in his image and his likeness. For instance, um, Psalm 23 Verse 3, where it said, Yahweh restore our lives. Right? Restore means to, to, to build back. 
right? Restore means to build back, and this is what Yahweh is doing with us, right? He's restoring our lives right now, right? By we coming to the house and we, we, we hearing the laws of Yahweh and we striving day by day, you know, to overcome sin. So that is where we will become in the full image and likeness of Yahweh. So, you know, that is why the whole purpose of Yahweh is separating us from the world. You know, Yahweh said, come out of her, my people, be separated, do not touch the un unclean things, and I will receive you. So that is the whole process, you know, the house of Yahweh is going through, you know, at, at this time. Over on page 220, verse 10, it said, of course, then... It last, lasted until our time period when Yahweh said knowledge, uh, that he would increase the knowledge. Knowledge would be increased, uh, and he gave you a time period for it. That time period was when uh, he looked and saw two others, two witnesses. Well, that was a time period that, uh, that the knowledge would be increased. He said, uh, and... Oh, we have seen that increase in knowledge in Pastor lifetime, lifetime. Down to verse 13, Pastor goes on to say, But then we move on over uh, a little bit, and you see a ballistic missile getting ready to take off. Now he's speaking about the um, demonstration that, that the house had put on at the entrance when you come in before we meet the car park and so on. And if you could remember, he showed us from Abel time, what Abel and they lived in, you know, tents uh, and they traveled with horse and, and wagons and all that stuff, right? So, so he's showing us from since that time to our time, the time to pass the time where that knowledge increased. And this is what Pastor, you know, is going, going on saying here. He said, and of course, this is why they, this, and of course, this is what they use according to what we have learned right now against Syria, a, a tactical nuclear bomb. Uh, and Putin uh, made the statement that uh, you do not, the statement that you do it again and Russia will intervene. So we can see the people, the nations are angry. Your judgment is coming. Revelation 10. Re Revelation 10. Uh, and the time when we have uh, to take this message to all the world. So he said this is the time period that we have to take this message to all the world. Now if you could imagine... Now, going back, going back to Abel, and Abel and they lived, traveled by horses and wagons and all that stuff. Now, when, when they were spreading the message, now, it could have taken at least like six months, you know, like feast to feast to get certain information, you know, get certain information out, right? It could have taken them that long. But with the increase of knowledge now, Right now, the house of Yahweh in these last days, we could take the message of the kingdom of Yahweh to any part of the earth in just a few seconds, maybe a minute, right, by the internet, right? And this is, this is why Yahweh said that he will work a work in these last days that will be, a, 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 you know, it will be astonished. He said, Moshe will even wonder how this little group could do such a marvelous work, but that is why, you know, the whole reason why knowledge, knowledge increase in these last days. For instance, for instance, okay, let us just look at in those days with the prophets and apostles. They wrote everything, they wrote everything, you know, on a, on a scroll, right? All the information they wrote, you know, they had to put it on a scroll, you know, to store that information. Now, in these last days, knowledge has increased so much that... We could put so much information, right, on, on something. I know most of, you, most of you know exactly what this is. Right? Now, I place, I place a dime right next to it so you could see, you could compare 
how small this is a SD card. So we can see how small that SD, SD card is compared to a dime. Now, one gigabyte, if you have an SD card with one gigabyte. Now, Pastor Sermons is approximately, give or take a few minutes, is roughly one hour. All right, one hour. Now, on this SD, SD card, In audio, that little SD card could hold approximately 33 sermons. All right, just one SD card, or one gigabyte we're speaking about. All right, that could hold approximately 33 of faster sermons. Now we're looking at, uh, at knowledge increase so we can take this message of the kingdom of Yahweh out. Now if we were to put information on, on this one gigabyte SD card in text, text, text size or in one page. Now, roughly or average, that is going to hold roughly, let us say, 80 pages. 80 pages will be equal to one megabyte. Right? That's smaller than a gigabyte. 80 pages. Now, this one gigabyte, that is approximately 8,000 pages of text. That is front and back. Now, we're speaking about this little SD card, one gigabyte. All right, so you're talking about 80,000 text sizes, front and back page. Now, the book of Yahweh, how many, book, how, many, how many pages the book of Yahweh have in it? All right, we're looking, at, we're looking at nine hundred nine hundred and eighty six. Nine hundred and eighty six pages. All right, so just this one gigabyte, this could hold a whole book of Yahweh, text, text size. Right, it could hold. It will hold approximately all the book of Israel. Right, and that is just one gigabyte. Now, it also has SD card with four gigabytes. It have eight gigabytes. It have sixteen gigabytes. Now, this is just SD card. It have sixteen gigabytes. It have thirty-two gigabytes. It have sixty-eight gigabytes. So you can imagine. A 64 gigabytes that could take every single thing that pastor all the literature that pastor wrote in text form. I just show you how much knowledge increase, right? So, so you see, all these things, you know, all these things is done for us to take the message of the kingdom to any part of the world, right? A simple, a simple phone like this. Right? That is the, the maximum gigabytes this phone could take is 64 gigabytes. So this could hold all that information. Right? So we can see why knowledge is increased. It's for us to take this message of the kingdom, you know, throughout all the world. Right? And that is something, you know, we have to keep in mind. We have to keep on pushing this work, getting this work done. So the message of the kingdom can go out to each and every individual. So moving on, moving on, continue in verse 13, it said, And the time or when we have to take this message to all the world, uh, we are getting pictures ready to go to go to Associated Press. And of course, it looks like uh, they are trying to stop the news from going out, from going out to. Every organization seems, every organization seems uh, like it's uh, under scrutiny right now. The bank, the loan company, the IRS, 
the, arm, the army, the armed forces, uh, and uh, the one uh, they uh, put in charge uh, uh, of preventing the rapists. He now have uh, filed. He now has filed uh, on for molesting. He said, "You know, uh, we put the fox in charge of the chicken house." Now this is this is like this is like. You know, training a child. You know, someone someone comes home by you and you tell your child, "Well, look, go and tell that individual I'm not home." What you're actually teaching that child, you're teaching that child to lie. So this whole basic system train every individual to lie, to steal, to, 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 to say sodomy is okay. And these are the ones, these are the people that are in charge. So this is what pastor is saying here. They put the fox, you know, to guard the chickens. Right? But praise Yahweh, you know, the house of Yahweh will make a difference. And, you know, we, that's why Yahweh have called us to make that difference, to stop this type of lifestyle you know, that is bringing forth by the Catholic Church. Pastor goes on to say, you know, on page 222, he's speaking about in, in Revelation 18, 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, so that you do not partake in her sins, and so that you do not receive of her plague. He said, for her sins had reached unto heaven. We go down to verse 24, where it said, 2 Corinthians. He said, and, verse 24, he said, and Yahweh uh, is saying to us here in Revelation and also in 2 Corinthians now, he is saying, come out from amongst them and be separated. Uh, and 2 Corinthians six eighteen said, uh, I will be their father uh, if you will do this. I will be a father to you, uh, and you will be my sons and daughters, say, say Yahweh Almighty. <clears throat> this is Yahweh, of course, uh, speaking to his house. No one else is going to come out of this world. It's his house only that uh, is coming out uh, of the world and coming out uh, of uh, the uncleanness. Look at 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1. Therefore, uh, having, these, uh, promise, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse, uh, uh, let us cleanse ourselves from all fil filthiness uh, of the flesh and spirit. Now, he said, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Now, what we have to look at, Yahshua Memorial and Yahweh Passover, it's coming up soon. And Yahshua said, you know, cleanse ourselves before we come to the feast. You know, cleansing the flesh is one. But one of the main things is cleansing the spirit, cleansing our minds, getting our minds set. Right? This is what Yahshua is speaking about, getting our minds set in the laws of Yahweh, in, in a mindset to serve Right? This is what we should be really focusing on right now. He said, now, if you think of what the world is teaching uh, about spirit here, uh, you would probably think right now, uh, this is all wrong. Uh, and uh, you can see the stupidity uh, in their teaching of the Holy Ghost. I spoke, speak about Casper. Now, now the, world gets, the world is so confused with what's the spirit of Yahweh is, right? Because in Romans showed you the law is spirit and holy. Now, what the world think the spirit is, is some kind of ghost, some kind of entity will, you know, will come into an individual, right? No, okay, for, for instance, if, no, to see how stupid that really is, right? Yahweh said the law is spirit. The law is spiritual, Okay, the law said, do not, do not steal. Thinking according to how the world thinks. Okay, that is a spirit. Okay, where that spirit went to? Do not steal. Where is that spirit? Okay, we can't see him. Okay, reverence Yahweh. Okay, where, where is that spirit? 
You know, where, where that spirit went to. Not to say how stupid that, that form of thinking really is. Right? But it shows the law is spirit. Now, when I say the law is spirit, the law is the, is the spirit, but the law is the way Yahweh think. Right? And that is the same mind, that is the same mind that Yahweh is, is, is forming or, or, or is training us to, you know, to be to be sons and daughters of Yahweh. We actually have to learn to think like Yahweh. That is the spirit. You know, when, you're, when you're Kiskia and, and Daniel said they were in the spirit, they was in full concentration and meditation on the laws of Yahweh. When Pastor showed us Miriam was over, over, overshadowed with the spirit, her mind, her whole body was geared in serving Yahweh. That is pretty, you know, Pastor is speaking about. And that is the spirit every individual in the house of Yahweh is working towards right now, understanding laws and letting the laws work in our lives. Right? That is the spirit that we have to have. Not no, not no ghosts. You know, we ain't, going, we ain't going there at all. Not no ghosts. We have to make the laws of Yahweh work in our lives. Now, basically, that is what he's speaking about here. Okay, it goes, on, it goes on to say in verse 27. By, but cleansing. You see, the spirit is, get, is getting you ready. Right? The mindset of Yahweh is getting us ready. It didn't get anyone else ready at all. But it's going to get you ready to raise the dead. Which is coming very soon. For the dung in verse 28, it said... Uh, but cleanse, it said, cleanse the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness. And this is what this is what you know we just mentioned about that 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 Holy Spirit. He said, this part, this part is this part. It is believing without seeing. That's part of the perfection of holiness, believing. Coming to unity without seeing. Right? That's a key thing. We have to, to, to come into unity without seeing. And how many times, Pastor, have expounded on that? We have to believe without seeing. Right? Whatever the house of Yahweh is bringing out, whatever Pastor is bringing out for us, we have to believe these things without seeing. Right? This is one of the key things. You know, in qualifying to the kingdom of Yahweh, especially us in these last days. Let's move on. Let's move on to verse, verse 31. Verse 31. It said, And of course, your body is filled with servants. Uh, and if you remember, if you remember all, and I am asking you to remember. If you can't remember, go back uh, and get the sermons uh, on the real cause of global warm warming. Uh, this is where I brought out uh, the most information on microorganism uh, and the kingdom of microorganism. Now, you know, praise Yahweh. Yahweh have uh, Yahweh have uh, blessed us with great understanding. With the, with, with the kingdom of microorganism. And what we, what we have to understand also, what the scripture also call as dust or, or the ground, speaking about, you know, these microorganisms. Now, it's a real great, you know, it's real great to understand how Yahweh create mankind uh, with trillions of microorganisms. For instance, in Genesis Chapter 2, verse 7, where it said, And Yahweh formed man uh, of the dust of the ground. So we know exactly what Yahweh is speaking about. We have that understanding. It's microorganism he's speaking about. Another example is Ecclesiastic 3.20, where it said, And all, it said, all are going to the same place. or All are from the dust. And all will return to dust. Right? Ecclesiastic 12, 7 also said, also says, uh, and the dust returned to the earth. It came from. 
and the Spirit returned to Yahweh, who gave it. Now, now don't, don't get thrown off where the Spirit returned to Yahweh. Right? You know, you're going back. Right? If you take it as it is, it's going back to Christianity. God, Pastor, Pastor, give us certain examples of the Spirit. He said, return back to Yahweh. Remember he said, if someone leaves the house of Yahweh, how that individual will lose the understanding. He said, it's like turning on and off a switch. Okay, well, that is what, he really is, what he's really referring to. They lose that understanding. That mindset of thinking like, like Yahweh, they automatically, you know, lose that understanding. Also in Genesis 2, verse, verse 19, where it said, Out of the ground, Yahweh formed uh, every beast uh, of the field and every bird of the air. So we can see exactly, we know with these microorganisms, we know, we know exactly what, we have a, a greater understanding of creation. And if, you know, we study even more, you know, about this, the word does, the word microorganism, and so on, we could even understand more about, you know, the ashes, the ashes of the red heifer. Right? Because remember in, in Genesis, he said, Yahweh, Yahweh created all the beasts of the field, all the birds of the air from the dust or from the ground. Now, when we look at, when we look at <clears throat> the ashes of the red heifer, we understand even more with what Pastor is bringing out with the microorganism because that ashes of the red heifer, the body was created from the ground. Now, with all the other components that was put together to, to, to make, to make the, that formula, right? We could see another kingdom of microorganism, you know, being formed for a specific purpose. Because we know that when we get sprinkled with that ashes of the red heifer, that those microorganisms will actually go into our body and start eliminating any microorganisms organism that contain any debt, right? So we could even understand even more about that microorganism, right? And even, even when we get sprinkled with the, the water of the ashes of the red heifer, right? What that does is a kingdom that is protecting and emulating, right? Taking out anything that is will cause or that is stemmed stemmed from that debt. So you know we can have we, the house of Yahweh is blessed to have even a deeper understanding, you know, with the microorganism that uh, the kingdom of microorganism that our body, you know, Yahweh create our body. Or oh, in finishing up, let's just turn over to verse 45. Say Isaiah 66, 17. Say, they who sanctify themselves. Now, get this. Get this. It's not Yahweh sanctifying those people. They sanctify themselves. They, they set themselves apart for a job, for a purpose. And that purpose, of course, is inspired by Satan as Yahweh shown. So, you know, it's two works. Yahweh is setting us apart for a particular job. To be sons and daughters of Yahweh, to maintain, to guard and to protect his work. And Satan is, is sanctifying those who is not in the house of Yahweh, the Catholic Church, and all these other organizations. So, so we can see directly, you know, we have to praise Yahweh for, for Yahweh calling us out and, and letting us be a part, you know, of this great work. And we should strive. Feast is coming up. Brothers, we should strive diligently, you know, to get ourselves ready, especially, you know, for Yahshua Memorial. What Yahshua Memorial mean, right? Yahshua humble himself and be a servant. And this is the same mindset we have to take on, not only for one night, not only for one night. We have to take on Yahshua for the rest of our life. We have to be like Yahshua. Yahshua said, you'll see me, you'll see the Father. So by us taking on Yahshua, 
Yahshua's character will be taken on Yahweh's character. So with this, let us go ahead and stand. I'd like to introduce to you the second teacher, the great Kohan Michael Hawkins. Please be seated, men. Please, Yahweh. Don't ever take for granted. Don't ever take for granted how blessed you are to be in Yahweh's house. You just don't know how thankful you are right now. Okay, let's look at page uh, 225 here. Around verse 53, Pastor's talking in the sermon, and he's telling us about another group that's in the inn that Yahweh would pull out from among the warring tribes, and he'd say, separate yourselves and come to me. Be separate, and I'll be your father. Yahweh says that he will be our father. That means we can be his children, but of course we can only be his children if we are obedient to the things that he says and truly, truly strive, uh, as the Kahan was just saying, you know, this is a, the feast is coming up and we really, really need to put, put all the effort that we can because the time is short, extremely short, and you just never know. You never know how long you have on this earth. You could leave here tonight and lose your life. Separate yourselves and come to me, and Yahweh says, I'll be your father. And that's what he's speaking of at this time period, the same group. So this, this family, this group of people that he's dealing with that he brought out of the land of Egypt. And remember that, he always dealt with one group of people, okay? One family, he says, only one family he ever called out. And then he was reading here from um, Yeketzke, and Yeketzke is talking about uh, how he was among the captives by the river Chabor, okay? And he says the heavens will open. And he said when they took a group like this, like they did with Yekeskia, remember now, they, they carried him off as captives and stuff, okay? And he says they would take a group like this with their roving armies, where the Roman army came from, and that's where he got his name, you know, it was a roving army, it roamed, and so it became a Roman army, and they were a roving army, but, um, you know, they say, well, they don't know where it came from. They came from over the mountains someplace, you know. And like Pastor says, lie, 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 because of the fact that, you know, to this day they still say the Caucasians, okay. The Caucasians came from a group of people that passed over the Caucasus mountains, so therefore they became the Caucasians. Where did it come from before that, you know? Where did it come from before that? You know, it's so stupid the way that they try and come up with these things. But remember, this is what the world does to separate the people, okay? They come up with a separation of the races and all this kind of stuff that, you know, to can cause confusion in the mind, of course, that, that just builds up hatred because Yahweh is unity. Yahweh building a family. He's building one family. Well, one body of Messiah made up of many members, okay? And if we can turn against one another, then, of course, there's separation, and then there's no unity, and it breaks apart the entire plan of Yahweh, you know, and it fights against it, and that's exactly what Satan does. That's why she causes these, these problems in the world today, and you see all the uprests get together because she didn't want to see peace on this earth. She just wants to see mankind destroy himself. So she continues to work this way. So... Anyway, it says the Roman armies, and before that, they had the spies that go out and they mapped the land, you know, the same thing where you saw where Moshe sent out the people, and then later on, uh, Yeshua, he sent out people. You know, he learned a lesson from what Moshe had done, uh, uh, the way that it occurred, so Yeshua did it a little bit differently. And so when they found a community where people were trying to live as a community, they would find a place to hide, and, you know, they thought... Uh, Pastor says that he thought that that's what was so neat about the, the Hmong people and the history of the Hmong people because they were pushed out and they left the so-called civilization barefooted, you know, and they walked around until they found a place and they hid for a while. He says, well, of course, that's the practice that went on in Israel when the people went out from Israel and they would start a community and then they would try and uh, build a police force to protect themselves. And, but then the Roman army would come around because the Roman army was much stronger 
remember now, this is all what the prophecies talk about, is that the armies would stand on his part and so forth. Okay, The Roman army was much stronger than anybody else, so they would come in and, and would eventually take over and force themselves and kill them off. You know, it was better for them just to, you know, they wanted the people there. They, they, didn't, want to, they didn't really want to kill off everybody because they killed off everybody. Who would, who would, who would, they, would be that they could get money from and so forth, you know? And to get uh, have their workers and all this kind of stuff, so they would rather force them and put them under oppression, and 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 put them down and beat them down into submission, so they could still have the people there doing their work and stuff, rather than just completely wiping everybody out. So um, it talks about here in, in verse uh, fifty-seven about the captives by the rivers of Chabar. He says, Pastor says. Uh, you know, when they set up a homestead and they started farming and working for the city of Babylon, or this great empire, which is, of course, the fourth Roman Empire, or the fourth empire, which became the Roman Empire, that eventually became strong enough to rule the earth, but not to hold it. They took it. They won the battles, but they did not win the war. Of course, the uprisings came, and they kept coming and coming and coming. And you even see that today, you know, uprising and uprising and uprising. Um, so, you know, it's never, man's way will never, ever bring peace to this earth. <clears throat> Let's see. Jump over to verse, well, verse 6. He says, well, anyway, back to this now. He says, okay, the heavens were open and I saw visions from Yahweh. And he says, now, if you look at chapter 3 in the Akeskia 3, verse 27, he says, but when I speak to you, and he's talking about Yahweh. Yahweh's speaking to Akeskia here. And he warns him. He warns him before that. He says, I'm going to send you out and warn these people, your brothers, of course, the brothers who, his brothers who are the 12 tribes. He says, and warn them of what they're doing, and they're going to try and shut your mouth. But he says, don't be concerned whether they convert or don't convert. That doesn't make any difference, you know. Just tell them what I tell you to tell them, okay? And that's exactly what we see Yahweh's last day's witness do in these last days. He just tells it like it is. You know, it doesn't matter whether people want to believe him or not. He's going to tell this world because he is that witness. He is Yahweh's witness, and he will bring forth what Yahweh inspires him to bring forth. And whether the people believe it or not, it doesn't really matter, you know, because he's certainly not going to suffer. And Yahweh is certainly not going to suffer. You know, what is it going to affect Yahweh if you don't believe? You know, if somebody doesn't believe that this is Yahweh's house, how's that going to hurt Yahweh? You think he's boo hoo 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 crying, you know, because somebody doesn't believe in his house? You know, he simply calls him a fool because you're a fool if you don't believe in Yahweh. You know, if you, don't, if you can't believe the things that, that Yahweh has shown and, and to know that Yahweh is real, then you are a fool. You know, you have really nothing to live for. And, of course, their minds are blinded at this time. But this is why it's so extremely important that we truly take all the teachings of Yahweh's house Learn it and apply it in our lives and use it because you just never know. All right, verse 62 says, But who, when I speak with you, now this is reading from Yekeska 3, verse 27. Yahweh says, But when I speak, talking to Yekeska, he says, But when I speak with you, I will open your mouth and will say to them this, and you will say to them, This is what Yahweh says. He who listens, let him hear, and he who refuses, let them refuse, for they are a rebellious, disobedient house. Now, what he's talking about here is Yekeskia was sent, okay? Yekeskia was the one sent, okay? And it's always hard for people to grab a hold of that concept that someone is sent by Yahweh, you know, because that's the true test of belief in the faith, is to believe that someone has sent. You remember what Yeshua said in Yachanan 629? Yeshua said, This is the work of Yahweh that you believe in him who he has sent. Okay, because that, that shows that you believe in Yahweh, that you're going to take him at his word. And then the very next verse, in verse 30, it, it says, Because of this, the people turn around and ask him, Well, what sign will you perform for us that we can see? You know, they wanted a sign. What work are you going to do? Well, he already told them what work he was going to do. All they had to do was believe that he was sent, and then 
they would have had the faith that Yahweh was looking for. Faith without, you know, faith without works is dead, but works without faith is dead as well, you know? So you, they, you have to believe without seeing because of the fact that, you know, in the, in the future when the time comes and you're sent out, you're just going to be sent out in some places and say, here, go and do this job. You don't know. You're not going to know what to expect until you get there sometimes, you know, and then you'll be able to, you'll be able to see what needs to be done and stuff. But, you know, if you always have to question all the time and, and know this and know that and all of these things, you know, too much time is wasted instead of getting the work done. And that's what Yahweh tries to show us, you know. Look over to uh, verse 60, uh, 67 here. Now, now before, before that, uh, around verse 65 there, Pastor talks about um, how Yekeshi was building, you know, he was told to take a stick, okay, and, and he said he's building a prop, like the, like the props that we see out here. You remember what Pastor talked about, the things that he made out here with the tent, tent of Abel and, and these different things. And he says, you know, unless you really understand these things, you know, it, it's not going to make any sense. He says it's kind of like seeing the movie The Grapes of Wrath. Okay, about the Dust Bowl. Well, unless you comprehend those things and really understand the purpose of what's, or the reason why you would want to see something like that, you really wouldn't understand and know anything. It wouldn't mean anything to you. But it means something to us in these last days because we see that, you know, it talks about the ends of this earth. And that's prophecy. You know, we realize that. These things are real to us. We understand them. We rely upon them. We we. we based our faith upon these things, okay? So it, it does mean something. So Yekeski was told to take this stick, okay, and, and, and put it together. One stick was of, um, he says, Son of man, take one stick and write upon it for Yadah and for the children of Israel associated with him. Then take another stick and write upon it for Yosef with the stick of Ephraim and all the house of Israel associated with them. And he says, join them together and they will become one stick, okay? One in your hand. So he was using these, these props to, to make this real in the people's minds. They could see it, and he would tell them the word of Yahweh, and, he would, and, and there was something that they could actually look at and behold. Okay? And that's what Pastor wanted us to, to do when he has these displays. You know, They're there to give us an idea, to a little bit in our head, of what he's trying to get us to thinking about, to make it real. Like You remember like the one... <laughs> Well, the neighbors never knew what was going on. They heard the fire truck going off and the loud sounds and everything over the loudspeakers and stuff, you know, for several nights. They had no idea what was going on, you know, and, and it freaked children out and children were crying and stuff because they didn't understand what was going on, whatever. But, brethren, that was real. That, 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 was a, that was like a shocker to, to get us to realize that this is what you're going to see, okay? Because while you sit here, like right now, we just sit here and we just think, oh, great, this is law class. And, oh, yeah, we're going to confess our sins and hunky-dory and everything's great. You better be thinking about what's going to take place, okay? What the hell that you're going to have to go through because you, 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 ain't, you ain't promised nothing. You ain't promised a thing except salvation if you overcome. But the overcoming, that's what you're going to have to deal with, okay? So we need to strengthen our minds now and realize the things that we're going to have to go through is really going to test your faith, okay? It's going to test your faith. So if you've got any weakness right now, you better look like strengthening that weakness because you're in for a very rough ride. And if you ever leave Yahweh's house thinking that you're going to get something out there, you're totally deceived and you'll be destroyed because Yahweh wants to know what's in your mind, what's in your heart, what do you want. And you know what? If you don't want to be in Yahweh's house, he says you can leave, and he's not concerned with it. He'd prefer to have you here, but he's going to give you the desire of your heart, right? So we have to keep that in mind always, that we have to truly believe in Yahweh and the one whom he has sent and follow those words, follow that example. Okay, so when Yahweh, anything that Yahweh has in his house, it's for a reason, there's a reason for it. When an announcement comes out that there's something that takes place, you know, a function or something, People ought to be here. You ought to be here. It's for your benefit. 
Now you think of that and you remember that when it comes time for the feast. Because if you're out there, like so many people are, when a function's going on here, every night of the week, there's something for men or there's something for women or it's for men and women. When you're out there in that campground because you didn't eat something, you think you're not going to eat? You think Yahweh's house is not going to feed the people? And yet people will stand out there in line? Or they'll be sitting out there chit-chatting and stuff. Rather than being in this sanctuary, listening to what Yahweh has to offer us. It's your choice, men. But if you want to be righteous and you want to be ahead, and whether you're married or not, the judgment's going to fall on your head. So don't take advantage of the things that Yahweh's given into us. That's the pleading of Yahweh, okay? Is Yahweh wants to build us and mold us. And our lives are fixing to change drastically. And you're either going to be there getting the education you want, or you're going to be left out. The choice is yours. But here he talks about unity, about putting these two sticks together, okay? And I, when I read that, you know, I, it makes me think about, um, because he says here, he talks about when the children of Israel, your people say, uh, what do you mean by this? And then he was, says, this is what Father Yahweh says, Behold, I will take the stick of Yosef, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the hand of Ephraim from the tw- tribes of, of Israel associated with it, and I will put them with it, with the stick of Yahweh, and make them one stick, and they will be one in my hand. You see, he, there's 12 tribes, but no one's going to remain separate, Okay? There's only one people. There's only one group of house of Yahweh. There's not many. There's just one, you know. There's one group of people. And when you think about Yeshua reminding the prophecy of the work of the witness Israel, you know, you remember in, in, um, in Isaiah 49, 6, Yahweh says, It's not enough that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Israel, of Yaakov, and to restore the protected of Israel, which is us. See, he's talking about gathering Israel together, Yaakov together, and also the protected of, of Israel. He says, but I'm going to give you as a sign. I'm going to give you as a sign to the nations so you will be my salvation to the ends of this earth. Don't ever forget, this is salvation. This is the only place of salvation. There is no other. Okay, so he goes on here and he says, um, he, he, he gets it in verse 73 here. This is in Yekeshka 1. He t- tells him, he says, take a, a clay tile, I'll put it in front of you and engrave on it the city of Jerusalem. And he says, build a siege wall against it, heap up a ramp against it, uh, set army camps against it, and then place battering rams on all its sides. So what he's talking about here is, you know, he's, he's telling them, this is what's going to take t- place to Jerusalem, okay? His war is going to take that place. You, you know, they're going to set up these battering rams, and, and they set up these ramps, and the army is going to come in, and they're going to attack you from all sides and, and tear you down. And he says, take you an iron plate and set up an iron plate between you and the city and set your face against it. So you will be besieging with you. It will be besieging with you, besieging it. He says, and this will be a sign to the house of Israel. And then he says, uh, you know, lay down on your left side and lay the iniquity of the house of Yahweh uh, upon it. For the number of days that you lie upon it, you will bear the iniquity. I have laid with you the number of years of your iniquity according to the number of the days. 390 days you shall bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. Could you do that? Could you get out there every day? For 390 days. Doing the work of Yahweh that he said to go out there, lay on your left side, do this. And when you have completed it, you shall lie down a second time on your right side. And then you will bear the iniquity of the house of Yada for 40 days. A day 
for each year. Isn't that something? 390 plus 40 days. It's a long time, isn't it? Very long time. Almost two years, you know. But you will set your face on the sage of Jerusalem and your arm... Uh, with your arm uncovered, and you will prophesy against it. And he says, I'll put ropes on you, and you turn from one side to another. And he goes on and on and on. Okay, look down to, and then in verse 80, uh, 82, verse 10, he says, Your food will, you will eat by weight, 20 shekels per day. About eight ounces from time to time shall you eat. You shall also drink water by measure. One-sixth of a hen, about two-thirds quart from time to time, you will drink it. So not only do you have to go out there, Lay on your side all of that time, and then you got a little bit of eat and a little bit of water to drink, and that's it. But that's what you always said to do, and Yekeska was faithful in doing it. He's teaching us a lesson here to do with what we have and quit our griping because we are unthankful, aren't we? It's something we really have to work on to get out of our lives. And you eat of the barley cakes and you would take it, bake it using the fuel of human excrement in their sight. Then Yahweh said, so will the children of Israel eat that defiled bread among the heathen where I drive them. Then I said, ah, Yahweh, my father, truly I have never defiled myself from my youth even to now. I've never eaten of that which died of itself. Or that which was torn by beast, or has abominable, nor has abominable meat ever entered into my mouth. Now notice this. Notice what he's saying here. Come out from among them. Touch not the unclean. And Yekeska's naming you some of the things right here. Right here that the news media is saying today we're talking about. You know, about the food supply. The way these things are defiled. So Yekeska apparently, he knew about it in his day. And it's the same in his day. You know, meat that's torn by animals was being used. Meat that dies of itself, you know, they have laws that say that certain cows that sh really should not enter into the food, food market, it, it's allowable. It used to be where down a cow, you know, it, it, it had to stand up. Now, I'll just get a forklift and lift it up. Oh, it's standing up. Get it in there. You know, they don't care anymore. These things have just gotten worse and worse and worse. And of course, pig is in everything and the pig feces and everything else, you know. It's all over the place. Well, that's what was sold in the open markets. Remember that the Apostle Shaul talked about, right? He says, be careful what you eat. And he warned him about these things. Now, and then if you also notice, remember what he said, Yahweh said in verse 12, you shall eat as barley cakes and bake it using the fuel of human excrement. And he kissed, he said, oh, no way, please. I've never eaten anything defiled. Please don't make me eat you know, human excrement. And Yahweh said, no, you use cow dung. But he was trying to, sh he was trying to show him a lesson. You know, it, that's found in today. Is it not? He's talking about today's time as well. You know, human excrement? Yes, it's in the food that they eat. And the world wonders why it's so damn confused. You know, they break every law of Yahweh. And they eat these things. You know, but it's not understood by the wicked, like Yahweh says. They can't grasp anything because to them it's normal. You know, you see everybody. You can, they can see documentaries about something that points something out. And then they'll turn right around and say, wow, let's go to McDonald's or wherever, you know, and go eat a burger. It's, it's like the, it, it doesn't sink in because their minds just can't grasp the things that they're trying to be shown that Yahweh's trying to show them. But notice he says in verse 88, he says, Nar has abominable meat. Okay, remember Leviticus 11, and Isaiah 66, the priest who eats swine's flesh, you know, abominable meat, you know, abominable meat. You have to follow a religion that teaches that in order to do it. Because the only reason why people eat unclean foods is because the religions teach them it's okay to eat unclean foods, you know. Religions have to teach this thing. And religion is what you believe in. It's a belief system. And they believe that it's okay, that this is food. It's not food. Food is something that the body, human body, uses to keep it alive and to build it. 
unclean stuff is really not food. It's not supplements for us to eat. It's not something that will keep us alive. It will to a certain extent. But as Yahweh says, dying you will die. It's something that will keep you alive just long enough to keep you suffering. That's the reason that Satan uses it. Whereas Yahweh says, if you eat what I say, the clean foods, it will give you all that you need to keep you alive to enjoy life and have health. You know? But the whole world's deceived. You know? And you remember, like I said, if they had stood in my counsel and they had turned them from the wicked ways, then they would be eating these things. You could go out to a hamburger joint and you would be able to eat clean foods. But you can't now, okay? One day you will be able to, but you can't do it now because the whole world is deceived. But the wicked will never understand these things. You know, it just doesn't make any sense to them. To them, it's normal, you know, that they, they look at things this way. Okay, look at, uh, so he goes on, he says, okay, you can use cow dung instead. And then he says, I'm going to, um, son of man, truly I will cut off the bread of, uh, of supply of bread in Jerusalem and they will eat bread by weight and anxiety and drink water by measure and desolation. You know, they're doing that today. You know, they're, they're, doing, they're doing that today. You know, they're drinking their water by measure and in desolation. You know, um, flush it down and drink it the next moment, you know. Ugh. So, he says they will lack bread and water, Okay. And they're going to be dismayed, they're going to be beaten down, and be consumed away by their iniquity. Okay, their iniquity, notice. It, they're going to consume away. Yahweh said in the very beginning in Genesis, he says, dying you would die. Well, iniquity is pushing these laws of Yahweh away. And that's what they did, you know. They, 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 they thought, you know, they pushed away the very, word, the very laws that would help protect them and give them life and, and give them health. They pushed these things away. And that's why there's so much confusion in their minds now. And they can't see these things. You know, even when Yekeshka was doing this, he had the displays out there. They still couldn't comprehend what he was doing. They thought, what's, what's this, this guy's nuts going out there laying down on the side all day long? You know, drinking a little bit of water and eating a little bit of barley bread and so forth. You know, he's crazy. You know, they just couldn't comprehend what Yahweh's prophet was trying to show them. And he was warning them ahead of time, remember? He said, You're going into captivity. You went into captivity. You're going to suffer. But they still wouldn't notice. They, just, they wouldn't take notice of what was going on. Okay, let's jump down to verse 93 here. He says, well, anyway, in Yekeshka 14 now, he says, look at verse 13. Son of man, when the sins of the earth have reached their peak. Okay, well, we're at this point right now. The sins of the, of the earth has reached its peak. There's never been a time period like we're living in today. Never has there been a time period. You can look back in history all that you want, and you will never find a time period like there is that we're living in today. You know, people will always say, well, diseases have been thousands of years. Yes, they have. And there's been epidemics and stuff. But they've never lived in the time period like we have today. Because you know what? 150 years ago, if you had a disease and stuff, you could take herbs and you could treat these things and you could cure yourself with them. You can't do that today. You can't do that today. There is no cure for their diseases. They go to the hospitals and they stay there and they get sicker and sicker and they die and they take their pharmaceuticals, which the scriptures talk about, and they put their trust in these things. You know, you ever see the commercials? You watch the commercial about their pharmaceuticals and the commercials are all about what? The side effects. Five seconds to talk about the product. Two and a half minutes talks about all the side effects. But you go to your doctor and you ask him if it's right for you, okay? It's like, man. But they, they have done away with these things, you know? They just can't see. Oh, jump down to verse 96. Now, he says here, he says, um, though these three men, he talked about Noah, Daniel, and Eob, he says they would, they, if they were here, they would only deliver themselves by their own righteousness. Because notice, it's by their righteousness. He says, they will deliver themselves, not anyone else. You can't, you can't get through on someone else's righteousness. You're going to have to do what we tell you to do and cleanse yourself. And hopefully everybody's done that, right? Everybody is on the cleanse, right? 
You got a short amount of time before the feast. If you haven't, you better look like doing it, okay? Because it is a law. Remember that. Okay? Cleanse your body as well as your mind, okay, before the feast. But you can't get by on anyone else's righteousness. You know, Yahweh is making each of us it is in his own image and likeness, okay? But it says you must work out your own salvation, right? You, you know, there's many members but one body. So you're not going to get in on anybody else's righteousness. You're only going to get in on your righteousness. Remember that. Okay. Uh, oh, jump down. Let's see. Um, jump down in verse 99 here. It says, therefore, leaving these promises, beloved. Now, here he's in 1 Corinthians 7. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of all the flesh. Okay. You know what the flesh is. And then, of course, he talks about the spirit as well. Cleanse yourself and fall filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. As the guy I was talking about before, perfecting holiness. Okay, it, it perfects the holiness. You want know, kind of get one idea about spirit. You know, in, in Exodus 35 verse 31, Yahweh was telling Moshe about about Bethel, and he says he has filled him, filled him with his spirit. And he says in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge. And then on top of all that, he gave them all the, man, the understanding of, the, of, of all the manner of workmanship. So he gave them the understanding to know how to perform his job. And he used them in doing Yahweh's work there to help out Moshe to make all of these things according to what? The pattern. The pattern that was shown to him on the mount. Okay, Don't forget that. There's a pattern that's shown in everything that we do. And every time Israel Hawkins opens his mouth up here... He's laying down the groundwork and showing you and revealing to us the pattern to follow. Okay? Follow that pattern. We've got to follow that pattern. Okay, so he says, that should be enough to help you out. And, we'll, and then he says, we'll speak to you next Sabbath. So he says, bless you and Yahweh bless you. And I'll turn the services over to the next leader. I love you. Praise Yahweh.